Hello and welcome. We're going to get into another video. Today's video, we'll be talking about the top team season 20 max out update in the open ultra league. And today's video, we have some teams from crazy good battlets, not just my own perspective. Okay. We have some good battlets who provide their input on the ultra league meta. Let's just go ahead and talk about the ultra league meta. As you guys all know, okay. My name is Yasir Ali. I'm a Twitch streamer. You find me out on Twitch, this channel, twitch.tv slash Yasir Ali. You can also subscribe to this channel for free. It doesn't cost you anything and help this channel to grow, especially if you like the content. Open Ultra League in a nutshell. Basically, XLs, legendaries, as long as they are below 2500. 2500 and below. And the, the league, this league is kind of dominated by five Pokemons in general. And it used to be six Pokemons and I had to remove one of them because it's technically out of the meta. The main Pokemons in Ultra League are Registeel, Cresselia, Giratina, and now they are joined by Feraligatr. It used to be good last season, but it was slightly, slightly below where it's supposed to be. But this season, Feraligatr is the main Pokemon in the entire Ultra League, and everything goes around it. So if you need a Feraligatr, if you need Giratina, and you need a pair to pair it with something that can cover it, covers it well, you go Feraligatr. If you need to use Reggie, use it with Feraligatr. If you want to use Cress, use it with Feraligatr. If you want to use uh, Zygarde, use it with Feraligatr. And if we take a look at the Open Ultra League, according to PvPoke, Zygarde is number one, followed by Shadow, Feraligatr, Malamar, Clefable, Pangoro, Liki Liki. We see like lots of new stuff. As an example, Malamar is, exists here, Clefable is top five, Pangoro is top five, okay? It's not a sim hero. I tried Pangoro, I had some battles in the Great League from uh, the cracked battler Elam. You can uh, check the video about his Pangoro in the Great League, and it was decent. So I'm assuming it will be much better in the Ultra League. Licky Licky basically took the uh, Jellicent's spot in the meta. Kobalion is back even stronger now. Uh, Machamp is good as well. And as always, I divide them, divide the main meta into three different categories. Good leads, good safe swaps, generals, which are good everywhere. So the lead Pokemons are Pokemons with decent fast move pressure, a baiting move, and a nuke. The safe swaps are Pokemon that do not care what you have. They have charge move, spam ability, which would like they do well against their own counters. As an example, Drapion is a poison dark without a poison fast move pressure. It's supposed to lose to Steel because it's a poison Pokemon, but somehow it can pull it through sometimes if you get some crunch debuffs here and there. Feraligator. Is supposed to lose to the water because technically all your damage is water uh, either uh, uh either <sighs> either hydro can or ice beam but you can still beat the tapu fini even though they have a neutral damage to throw and it's a good move such as nature's madness uh cliffable it's a fairy pokemon that can have a decent play into its own counters well technically there isn't counters to cliffable in the meta like technically drapion is not a uh, counter to cliffable it's just like a, a very bulky pokemon and yes you do need a very bulky cliffable so please go for the high rank cliffable don't go for like a hundo or like raid iv if you're investing cliffable in the Ultra league uh, go for as bulky as possible uh, so the good leads, as I said, fast move, good fast move pressure, a baiting move, and a nuking move. And the biggest example about that we have Alon Sand Slash, uh, Ampharos, Malamar. Malamar has been buffed this season. Now Psywave Wave is technically the uh, opposite of Dragon Breath. It does three damage per turn and it generates four, while Dragon Breath does four and generates three, which makes Malamar one of the best Pokémons in the entire PvP. Now the Pokémon is actually a beast. It's a dark Pokemon that technically uh, doesn't lose. Uh, it's the dark that beats the opposing dark. It's a psychic that beats all the dark as well because of the dual typing between dark and psychic and leave it vulnerable only to fairy. Uh, that's it. Like the only thing that Malamar feeds is basically fairies. And actually you could just go superpower and uh, hyper beam. But to be honest, in Ultra League, you might not need superpower. You can just go uh, foul play and hyper beam and you run hyper beam for the fairies and you can use it to bait out the fairies. Like as an example, you use it as like a, some sort of like AVB teams as we will see later. As like, okay, you safe swap it. If they bring in a fairy, you go hyper beam. And if they shield, who cares? Because you're trying to bait that out. A new lead will be something like, as an example, something like Sand Slash, something that destroys the fairies. Uh, Pidgeot got nerfed into uh, Wing Attack. Now it's you have to run Gust, and it's not as ideal, so I don't recommend running it. And Talonflame is actually in a much better situation now. Uh, I don't know why, but I feel like Talonflame is very, very decent in the current meta, even though Feraligatr will be everywhere, but I, I'm assuming Talonflame just 
should beat everything else. Uh, Pangoro is a decent Pokemon, as I said, and it has a it's a very fast Pokemon to get to a charge move. It gets to a Night Slash and four, and if you get a Night Slash boost, you kind of become like a as uh, my, as the, our editor called it, fast and furious, like fast and also hit hard. Shadow Machamp is very decent, uh, with the exception that you do need Stone Edge, okay? So if you're running Machamp, it's going to be very expensive because you need Karate Chop and Stone Edge and both are Legacy. You need a Legacy Elite uh, Fast TM and you need an Elite Charge TM. Or you could just run A Slash and you only need technically Shadow Claw as a Legacy move. Galarian Weezing, it's a good lead, but it's also a good safe swap. So I put it kind of in between. Galarian Weezing now has a get two buffs. Brutal Swing is a 35 energy decent move now. And Fairy Wind get buffed as well. And Galarian Weezing was slightly below the meta now. It's supposed to be a great core breaker as should have great play into almost everything except Feraligator. Safe swaps Pokemon. Those Pokemon tend to not care about whatever they have because you can just spam one move and pull it through by having energy up. Uh, as an example, Feraligator can beat uh, the dragons, Feraligator can beat uh, Ampharos up, uh, up energy, which is supposed to be the hardest counter to Feraligator. Uh, Clefable, one of the best Pokemon. Slorgas get a decent buff now because it has Fairy Wind and Fairy Wind is boosted, but technically if you want to use a Fairy, you use Clefable. Uh, Licky Licky, which will be featured in some teams today, uh, is is the one that took Jellicent's spot as like a good safe swap. The thing about uh, Licky Licky, which I don't like, is that if you have Shadow Ball, you will need EQ. If you have EQ, you will need Shadow Ball. So what to run? I am not going to run it for that simple reason. I am sure when I have Shadow Ball, I will get uh, I will get Registeel. If I run EQ, I will need Shadow Ball. That has always been the case. Some Pokemon that are worth mentioning, Virizion uh, is such a great code breaker into the, into the meta since everything, whether it's Feraligator or Feraligator counters, Virizion has a decent play into it. Like as an example, Virizion into Drapion is not a bad matchup. Virizion into Feraligator is a great matchup. Virizion destroys this. Virizion beats this, right? Uh, Dusknir. Dusknir get a decent buff now. Uh, it has, I think it has Astonish and it has a Shadow Punch, which also, which also get a big buff now. It's a, it's an Aqua Tail clone. Steelix has a decent play into the entire meta and uh, this Pokemon, Glissopod, is one of the safest Pokemons to use with the exception that it's kind of underwhelming. The damage you do is not as ideal, but to be honest, it has a good matchup into Feraligator, so why not? Uh, generals, those Pokemons are just beasts. They are OP. Like, you could say, instead of Generals, the OP Pokemon. So, Registeel is the biggest example. It got two nerfs so far. Zapcan went from providing 100% buff nerf, uh, sorry, providing 100% defense uh, attack fell. Now, then it became 66, now it's 33. It's still decent, to be honest, even if it didn't have the debuff. Because what Registeel needed is needed a move that hit the waters with a super effective move. And Zapcan is still a nuke, so even if you don't get the debuff, you should still be fine again. The nerf to Registeel made Registeel a bit more picky to be used. Uh, so the only reason to use Registeel if you have a great IV, I'm talking about top 20 PvP IV in the Ultra League. Uh, because with that, you can destroy Feraligator down a shield. Uh, Giratina is decent. I do think that Giratina has so many counters this season, so you have to run Dragon Breath. I don't like Shadow Claw on this season. Because we have Licky Licky. But what about this? Well, whatever. Okay. But we have lots of Dark Pokemons, and uh, I prefer Dragon Breath over Shadow Claw in this meta. Tapovini has a decent play into the meta. Similar goes for Cobalion. And remember that zygarde exists but you can always ignore zygarde and hope that people just took it to master league like me i don't have an ultra league zygarde but we will talk about some teams about zygarde in the ultra league top performers top performers are the pokemon that generally do great into everything in the condensed meta because top pokemons mean that are the pokemons that do well against everything top performers are the pokemons that do well against the condensed meta which is like the 20 pokemons that everyone use so i usually recommend using two of these pokemons feraligator skulldurge guzzlord giratina tapofini i don't recommend tapofini this season it's kind of slow especially with the making surf uh, more uh, expensive i mean they buffed the damage and they made it more expensive but still tapofini doesn't generate that much energy so it's kind of bad that they made it more expensive 
Uh, Sand Slash is actually decent. Same goes for Kress. Now, moving into the top teams from the top players. Okay, those players are like great players. And I asked about... I asked them to provide me with the team that they will be using in the Go Battle League. Uh, the first team, as always, will be the top three PV POC. I know some people said these top three PV POC aren't actual teams, but I'm talking about it today because it's an actual team. This team is, if you have a Zygarde, it's supposed to be the best Zygarde team, with the exception that this team struggles a bit into Clefable. So, what I recommend doing is just do it this way. If you don't see a Clefable, you swap into this thing, Malamar, bait out the fairy. You run Hyper Beam here, Hyper Beam Foul Play, and then you have Zygarde in the back. If you bait out the fairy, you beat it with this, and then Zygarde just destroy everything in the in the meta. But yeah, so what will be will you be running? I will be running Talonflame. I know I gave Talonflame lots of uh, BS because this team is kind. Of, this Pokemon is kind of like uh, stupid. And I actually, that's why it's so strong. It's just stupid and strong. You don't even need to think. You just, if you see something that takes a neutral from fire, you throw flame charge. If you see something that doesn't take, that resists the flame charge, but takes a neutral from fly, you throw fly. You can actually run fly and brave bird as well. So I'm going to run talent flame followed by Feraligator with Malamar or Clefable. Most likely I will be using Malamar. I looked up my Pokemons and I think I have a good Malamar to use. So I should have a good Malamar to use. So I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't be in like a, uh, I, I don't think, I. Th so mo most likely I will stream, by the way, uh, right after the, when the leagues are up, okay, when Monday 3 p.m. Central Time, when the leagues switch, I will be live on Twitch and YouTube, so uh, make sure to stop by uh, if you are looking for a team. You can copy a team I use or you can copy a team from my uh, opponents as well. Now moving into another solid team that was provided by Wholesome, Wholesome Pogo on X, Wholesome Pogo on Twitch, Wholesome underscore. Wholesome is known for his signature Pokemon team since Season 1, which used to be Machamp, Snorlax, Muck, Al uh, Alolan Muck. Uh, Snorlax is bad, so he replaced the Snorlax with Licky Licky. Uh, uh, Shadow Drapion get a big buff now with Poison Sting uh, doing one more damage, so he's going to switch his Amok into... Shadow Drapion. The team is called Broken by Zygarde, but to be honest, not anyone has Zygarde. Zygarde only exists at high-end uh, MMR, which are usually like 10, 20 people who has it. So that's it. So at lower MMR, don't care about it. Don't put, don't, don't bother. But if people are running it, you simply just switch your Drapion into Alolan Sand Slash and put Alolan Sand Slash in the lead and Machamp in the back. Okay, so if you see Zygarde, put Alolan Sand Slash here. Then you lead it and put Machamp in the back. That's how you do it, okay? Moving into another solid team that was provided by a, a Twitch streamer, former rank one, uh, the Pokemon. Uh, on Twitter, it's a Wixad, which is basically the Pokemon upside down. If you... It's upside down. Uh, yeah, he, he likes to make stuff a bit more complicated for me to understand. So that's, uh, that's, the, that's the thing about him. He has a rank one Ultra League Zygarde, which... Uh, which is actually insane and that's the single reason why that's the sim that's basically a reason why he is not taking it to master league and he's pairing it up with registeel and clefable the team doesn't have shield pressure but the team is an insane team of a closer like 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 what can appreciate an eq from here or an outrage or a zap or a focus blast or a meteor mash like the team just does great and has insane amount of bulk so if you have zygarde this is the best team for you uh, he didn't say Malamar, but I think Malamar makes sense because the team struggles into A slash in the lead. Uh, usually, if they lead A slash, you go Registeel. Registeel wins the zero and wins the one shield. But if they double shield, it becomes a bit uh, tricky. Uh, tricky? What's tricky? And then Clefable also can beat Sand Slash because Clefable has Meteor Match. What about the moveset on Clefable? Well, uh, you have to go and watch uh, his stream once you go live on twitch.tv slash the Pokemon Go. Because I do think that Clefable should require like different moveset this season. It get access to Swift. But you kind of need Meteor Match. But if you're on Swift and Meteor Mash, uh, you will be... Uh, walled by Jolicent. So what to do? What to do is you go and watch his stream and ask him this question. Now, moving into another team, an actual unique team provided by that boy J, another former rank one player. He he said Verizian has a play into everything, and he is actually correct. Nothing in the meta, 
appreciate seeing a Virizina. Virizina is just insanely good because it's technically a fighter that didn't get a nerf. They nerfed counter, but this thing has double kick. It also has Leaf Blade and Sacred Sword. None of these moves got a nerf, which means Virizian will be even better than last season. So there is no more Annihilate and Polyrath, which used to give Virizian some bad time. But they don't exist anymore, so you only care about Giratinas, which aren't as popular as last season. And the main Pokemon in the meta is Feraligator, which you destroy. Uh, people also use uh, Registeel, Sandslash, and Ampharos, which you also destroy. So, I like this team. I might yonk it. I might steal his team and actually try it. Uh, Shadow Drapion in the back is just a great safe swap. This thing is also a great safe swap. The another thing about this team is that everything here is a good lead. Everything here is a good safe swap. Everything here is good in the back. A code breaker to this team is a, stunk, a skunk, a skunk tank, but the Stunky doesn't have technically a great cover. Coverage. It doesn't have a, like it's not a sweeper, so you don't care. You're gonna sack a Pokemon into it, and that's all uh, it happens. Uh, I do believe that Drapion has the worst matchup into Skunk among those three. Everything else should be fine. Now we have a solid, unique team provided by Signal. Signal is a, a team, a teammate of mine. You can find him in Page One leaderboard sometimes when he is playing, but he doesn't play as much. Uh, but he loves playing Drifblim, and he said this season he might try hard because Drifblim is good in the meta. And he also loved Drapion, so both of his favorite Pokemons are actually meta. He said that Pangoro is decent, which I agree. Drifblim is unique. And Drifblim is probably the most flexible Pokemon in the current meta. He said having Icy Wind or Mystical Fire depend depends on what you see. What does that mean? That means if you see Dragons, you're an Icy Wind. If you see Steel, you're an Mystical Fire. They do the same amount of damage. They do have the same amount, the same utility, which is drop the opponent's uh, defense, I think. Was Mystical Fire might uh, drop the defense, but I'm sure I soon drops the attack. I don't call me out on this, but I need to double check with this. But basically, or you could also just go Mystical Fire and Icy Wind. Just as simple as that. And you have Tentacroll in the back because technically you're extremely weak to Fairy in the lead. So if they have that in the lead, you have to... You have to go okay, if they lead Fairy... You go uh, Drifblim because Drifblim is the safe swap. If they swap in a fairy, you go Tentacle and destroy the heck out of them. Another similar team actually was provided by Pokegains. Pokegains uh, is a fellow Nidoking Double Dark player. And that ever, thing, ever, ever since that thing got nerfed, he was lost kind of in the meta. And he was looking for something he would enjoy using. Until Greninja get a buff and they gave it Hydro Cannon and uh, Water Shuriken. So now Greninja kind of usable in the Ultra League. He loves using Tentacroll. And he was like, okay, I love Tentacroll. I love uh, uh, Greninja. And this thing got buffed. It, it looks cool to use it. So, hey, when talking about who's cool, Pokegains is always there. He's a Twitch streamer. You can find him out on twitch.tv slash Pokegains 3Ns 3S. Or on X. <laughs> Or a Twitter, what you call it, Pokegains 3, 2N, 3S. Yeah, that's inconsistent. You have to have 3Ns and 3S here. Change it, Pokegains. Uh, the team core broken by Skunk Tank, but to be honest, I am sure the Greninja destroys it. I am sure this thing destroys it. I am sure this thing destroys it. So this might be like a bad Sims uh, on uh, on PV Poke. Uh, I love this team. It's kind of like hit hard. Uh, frail but hit hard on the back but here here we have some decent amount of bulk uh, usually whenever you are in a neutral lead you just dip out to greninja and something he said that greninja learns aerial ace which actually i had no idea about you could run aerial ace if you see some fighters and it does some decent amount of damage because greninja has some crazy high attack Another team that was provided by Nysis. Uh, Nysis, you can find him on X at x.com slash Nysis or on Twitch. You just type Nysis on Twitch and that will take it to his stream. Uh, he only plays a Dragonite with Registeel every season. He used to run Skunk Tank and he said Feraligator is better this season. So this is going to be his team. He's a, he's a Twitch streamer. And if you are asking why does he have a tail on his logo, I don't know. You might be wondering, is he a furry? Because he has a tail? I can't answer that. I cannot confirm or deny, to be honest. But uh, you could assume because there is a tail there, right? Uh, Registeel is an insane safe swap. Feraligator is an insane safe swap. Dragonite is an insane lead of a Pokemon. Because this Pokemon just hit insanely hard and melt them down. Like the fast move pressure. If it's a neutral matchup, Dragonite will just destroy them. You use Registeel to catch moves. And you use Feraligator to clean after. 
I saw the team using Guzzlord. Guzzlord team, the best Guzzlord team used to be Guzzlord, Tenta, Trev. Don't use Trev, please use Feraligator and then you will have yourself one of the best teams in the Ultra League. And that's it for today. I'm not going to provide lots of teams that are, aren't useful. So we try to provide unique and good codes. Uh, with a great coverage so yeah thank you so much everyone for watching this is the end of the video if you like this video uh, make sure to leave a like if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe and i will see you all in the next video thanks so much for watching enjoy the rest of your day night or whatever you're having that's it for today peace